Welcome to this WiseOwl tutorial on using script components in SQL Server integration services. Here's what you'll learn in the tutorial. We'll begin with an overview of what we're trying to do. So I'll explain what the package is we're trying to create and how to find useful files on the WiseOwl blog to save yourself a fair amount of typing. We'll then begin the package, firstly erasing any old data tables and then importing a flat file data of dodgy data. We'll then create a script component to clean it up, firstly setting input and output columns and then writing the script itself to validate the data. Finally, we'll finish the package off by conditionally splitting the data according to a flag set in our script and then by sending the data down to two different destination tables. So let's begin. Before we begin looking at our script component, let's have a look at what we're trying to achieve. I'm afraid it's the, the UK X Factor contestants data again, sorry about that, but at least it makes for a simple example. I've got a dodgy data text file here containing the name of a contestant, Shane Ward for example, the series they took part in, the final position they reached, and the name of the mentor who looked after them. All will be well importing this until I get to the fourth line when there's incomplete data, and I'll struggle to import the sixth line as well. What my script component will do is validate the data and send it down two different pipes. The good data will go down into a table called TBL good contestant. I'll end, in, I'll end up with five records in that table, giving the name of the contestant, the series number, position number, and their mentor. The bad data will go into a table called TBL bad contestant, and that'll be the naughty corner for data. And what it will do is not only list out as much details as it can, but it will also give a reason why it wasn't able to import the data. So that's what we're aiming to achieve. Here's what the package will look like. I'll start off in control flow by deleting any old records from any, those two tables. And then I'll launch straight into a data flow task. And what that will do is import the data from the flat file, use a script component to validate the data to make it make sense, and then use a conditional split to send the data down two different paths. The valid data will go into the good data table, and the invalid data will go into the bad data table. And if I run that package now, you should see it refreshing the two tables. So that's what we're aiming to achieve. Let's have a look at how you can find some files to make your life easier watching this tutorial. To make life easier for you watching this tutorial, you might like to go to our blog which provides the files needed as backup to it. You can get to the blog by either typing this URL into your browser, or probably more simply, by going to the WiseOwl website, www.wiseowl.co.uk, and just typing in 395 in the search box. When you do that, it comes up with two or three um, web pages, but the one you'll need is fairly obvious, and if you click on that, it will go to it. As you scroll down, you can see that the dodgy data file we'll need is there, there's some script to create the two tables you'll need. There's some script to truncate the data from the two tables to before we run the package. And finally, there's the C sharp and also the VB script to get the script component to work. So you may find that useful before we begin. If you want to follow along with this tutorial, you'll first need to do a little bit of setting up. You'll need to create a table called TBL Good Contestant in SQL Server Management Studio. And if we look at the design of this, you can see that it contains the contestant name, the series number, the position, and the mentor. I've made the integer fields just int, and I've made the text fields varchar255. So they're not using Unicode character data, and there's a maximum string length of 255 characters. I haven't got a primary key in the table, which is fairly unusual. The bad contestant table contains the same fields with one addition. There's also a problem field which has varchar max as a data type, so I can type in as much information on the problem as I like. You can generate both those two tables from the script on the blog referred to earlier in this tutorial. So with those two tables set up, what you should now do is go to Information Services and create a new package. I've created two tasks in the control flow. One I've called delete all data, and that was an execute SQL task. And what that does is use a connection to a SQL Server uh, database, which I've already created in the Connection Manager section for the project. And if I double click on that, 
you can see it runs a command against it, an SQL statement, and what that does is truncate the information from the two tables. So basically I'm just wiping out any old data so that whenever I run the package I'll be able to see if it's worked properly. The second control flow task is called import dodgy data and it's a data flow task. And if I double click on it, you'll see that what it does is nothing. So what we now need to do is start importing our flat file data. If I look then at my data flow task, it's empty. So the first thing I need to do is create a flat file connection and import data from it. I'm going to create this at package level, not a project level. So I'll right click in connection managers and choose to create a new flat file connection. I'll call it dodgy data because that's what it is. And then click on the browse button and find my file called contestants.txt, which is lingering on my desktop. Before I continue to the next tab, I need to specify that there's no column names in my first data row because it contains the name of the first contestant. If I then go to the columns tab, I need to check my row delimiter is a carriage return, which it is. Columns are delimited by a comma, which is correct. So what I can now do is go straight on to the advanced tab and specify details for each column. The first one I'm going to rename as contestant name and make sure it's a correct data type, so it's a non-unicode character, dt underscore str. My second column is going to be series number. And my third column is going to be position. And my fourth column is going to be, I can just go on to that, the mentor name. Just review all those. The data types for my series number and position have been given as text fields, so I need to change those to unsigned integers, like so. So I think that gives me the correct four fields, and I can preview it to check that it's going to look sensible. And in fact, you can see from this that it all looks, looks OK. So if I choose OK to confirm that, what I can now do is add a source assistant I'm using my dodgy data connection manager with a flat file connection. I'm going to rename this as dodgy data import. And I can double click on that to configure it. You can see the columns have been imported sensibly. So I think that's all looking OK. And I can go on to the next stage, which is to actually validate the data using a script component. So what I'm going to do now is to add a script component into my data flow. There's two script tasks you can create in integration services. There's the script task, which is used to control execution, the order of execution. And there's the script component task, which is used in data flow to validate data usually. When I add that, it will ask me whether this script component is being used to say where, to say where the data is coming from, where it's going to, or how it's being trans transformed on its journey and we want the last one. What I'll do is then rename it to say that it's going to validate the data. And then what I'll do is map the columns from the import into that script component task. The red cross will continue to show because I haven't yet edited any script for the task. And you always think at this point, well, give me a chance and I might. If I double click on this script component task then, the first thing I'm going to do is ignore the script tab completely and instead, instead specify what the input columns are and what the outputs are. I'm going to leave my input called input zero. You can have multiple sets of inputs if you like, but this is only taking information from a single table. I'm going to tick this box to say that I want to import all four columns from the previous flat file connector, but I want to be able to change the contestant name and the mentor name. And that's because one of the things my script component task is going to do is to trim off any spaces from those two names. The series number and the position I want to be read only because I'm actually going to generate new values for those in new columns, as we'll see in the inputs and outputs section. So my inputs are there, I've just specified those, but my outputs don't as yet exist. So what I need to do is add four columns. The first column I will call int series and it's going to be an unsigned integer. The next column will be called int position 
and that too is going to be an unsigned integer. The third column I'm going to call problem and what this will be is a text field I'm going to use non-unicode character format to match up with the varchar in the SQL Server table and I'll say it can be up to a thousand characters and what the problem field will do is hold details of what problem I found if any in the data. The final column I'll call if good and that's going to be a boolean column and what that will be used for is the conditional split transform so the good data goes down one pipe and bad data goes down the other. So those are the columns which are coming out of my um, script component task. What I now need to do is edit some script, which we'll do in the next stage of this tutorial. To assign script to a script component, I need to first click on the script tab on the left hand side, then choose my language. I've cheated a bit here, I've already actually assigned some script to the script component, but normally I'll be able to choose Visual Basic or Visual C Sharp in that box. If you're a VB programmer, don't despair. The principles are the same for either language, and I've included the VB code on the website which I referred to at the beginning of this tutorial. So if I click on the Edit Script button, I can see that magically the script fairy has already assigned some script. And as I scroll down, I can see it there. There are three possible events which can happen for a script component. The first one is called pre-execute, and this will run before the rows start being processed. Now I don't want anything to happen there, so I'm just going to delete the entire event handling stub as it's called. Likewise, I don't want anything to happen when all the rows have been processed, so I'm going to delete the post execute stub as well. After deleting some comments, this leaves me with the single event handler for each row. There's only one set of inputs feeding into the script component, and that's be being known as input zero buffer. For those who are into these things, that's the custom created class within Visual Studio, and it's given it automatically a name of row. What this means is that I can type in on any row, any row the word row dot, and it will come up with a list of properties corresponding to the columns which I specified in my script component. I can get the value of the column, but I can also tell whether it was null or not by using the specially constructed property within Visual Studio. Now I've already pasted in some code, so let's see what it does. The first thing I'm going to do is check whether any of the fields are null. And to do that, I test whether the contestant name, the position, the series number, or the mentor name are null. If any one of those is null, what I'll do is three things. Firstly, I'll say that we have a problem, and that will be stored, passed out of the script, and stored in the SQL Server table for the bad data. Secondly, I'll set the if good flag and that will be used to take us down the right path of the conditional split task. And finally, I'll prematurely exit the subroutine. If I don't do that, you can assume that none of the fields were null. And so what I can do is go on to the next stage, which is to try to read in the series and the position numbers. I foolishly made these unsigned integers, so what I have to do is create two variables of the correct type. And then what I'm going to try to do is read into each of these two variables the value of the columns called series number and position. If that's successful, those variables called S and P will hold integer values. Otherwise, they'll still hold the number zero. So what I can then do down here is say, if either S or P still equals zero, it means we were unable to convert the imported data into integers for a particular row. And so again, what we do is say what the problem is, set the flag so that the conditional split transform sends the data down the correct path, and abort the subroutine early. Now if we get through both those two blocks of code, it means everything's okay. So what we're going to do is store the new column, the output column called int series, and also the one called int position, to hold the values of the series number and the position number. Then we're going to trim the mentor name and the contestant name. The reason we can do that, remember, is because we made those two columns read, read write columns which means not only can we get to the values of them, we can also change them as well in our script. Finally, we'll recall the fact that there was no problem occurring. That's actually not strictly speaking necessary because that column isn't stored in the good data table. And most importantly, we'll flag the fact that everything was successful. 
So that completes my script. I can now come out of that and choose OK. If I could but see the button. Um, and it's accepted my script, so that's a very good sign. Having completed my script, what I now need to do is to finish off the package. The first thing to do is to split my data into two streams using the value of the if good column that I've set inside my script. To do that, I'm going to use a conditional split transform, which I'll add in. And what this will do is split the data into two parts. If I double click on that to edit it, what I'm going to do is create an output which should be the good data. And something will be good if the column called if good holds the value true. And don't forget I need to put two equal signs in there because I'm using effectively a C-sharp like language. And so for VB programmers that's, that's difficult to remember. That's my good data path. Anything else will go down the other path which I'll call bad data. And if I save that and choose OK, that should successfully split, split my data into the two bits. Now that I've split my data into the two parts, all I need to do is send it to the two tables. I'm going to use two destination assistants. The first one will be for the good data. And I'm going to assign a connection manager I've already created to my database. I'll feed the output from the conditional split transform into that data table. And what SSIS will ask me is which output do I want to take? I'm going to take the good data the ones which were output where the if good flag was set to true. I'll then rename this destination to say it's a good data table. And what I then need to do is say which table is going to feed into by double clicking on it and choosing the TBL good contestant table. That's not quite enough actually. I need to go into the mappings and I need to say which column in the input columns is going to which destination column. It's tempting to leave the series number as it is. After all, both the two columns have the same name. Likewise for the position. But in fact, the series is coming from the newly derived in series uh, variable that I create, or rather column, that I created in my script. And likewise, the position is coming from the newly created in position column. And the mentor will come from the mentor name. So it looks a bit of a mess there, but that should give me the correct results. I can then use another destination assistant to do exactly the same thing. So I'll go through this more quickly. And what this is going to do is create the bad data table. It's going to work in exactly the same way, but this time when I drag the conditional split transform onto it, it will automatically associate the only remaining output, which is the bad data. I can then configure that, say which table is going in to go into, and then create the mappings in exactly the same way as I did before. Again, I'll get rid of the existing mappings for the position and the series number, and instead map my newly derived columns on. And I also need to take the problem in so that I know what the problem was. If I then choose OK for that, I think everything's good to go. So what I'll do is set that to be my startup object, and let's try running it. And all appears to have gone successfully, and I've repopulated my data and you can see that because seven rows came down here, five went to the good data and two went to the bad data. So everything works successfully. And that completes that tutorial. You can find lots more training resources about Microsoft software on our website at www.wiseowl.co.uk, including things to do with Microsoft.NET training, SQL Server training, and also Microsoft Office training.